Hey, everyone. Happy to have you here for another episode of Legacy Matters. Today, as usual, we will talk about whatever comes up with a slight leaning toward discussions of preserving your legacy, preparing for things to come, and sharing stories we find amusing. We're going. Oh, okay. Okay, welcome. Here we are. Here we are. Uh, Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning. Jim. October <laughs> Jim. something. Jim. Hello, oh, Jim. Jim. Sam and Sarah. Sarah. Sam and Sarah. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> right. We're we all here. We should say a huh? quick weather check that this is probably going to be the last good day for about six months. You know, oh. I was going to do the, the radio. intro. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and you just kind of stole the whole thing from me. Like you just, like I'm. I felt that was urgent to say. Uh, I, no, I, it might be. So no, let, ahead, let's Jim. just so you know, we did work that out ahead of time. I know. Uh, it was Jim's intro to do this. Yeah. Thing. And then you know, Sarah, when do Sarah I, couldn't help Sarah herself. Sarah just when, like, but it's like. When do I ever interrupt? <laughs> like you like, you know. <laughs> it's like, wow. Okay. Anyways. Sorry, Jim. No, it's okay. It's okay. Jim's okay. All right. Well, regroup uh, and get at it. All right, here we are. Legacy Matters. <laughs> yeah, Welcome. Legacy Matters podcast. Le- <laughs> See, you can't stop. <laughs> right. It's a, okay. Legacy this is Matters. A, this is sort of a first for Sarah, though. Let yeah, her, let her all fired let her up. Yeah. Usually we have to prompt her to talk. Right. All right, you got it. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. It's October. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful day. Leaves are changing color. Um, crisp, cool air, <laughs> sunny. That's our weather Jim report. Jim and I both have our jean shirts on. We do. We do. Oh, Mine's not even, Well, kind of genie. denim, but yeah. anyway. Yeah, so we're kind of matchy-matchy uh, well, today, getting ready for Canadian fall. Day or something. Canadian Day. Yeah. Right here. All right, well, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. <laughs> thanks for we listening. are getting a lot of Tune comments, in. so <laughs> we will get to the comments. <laughs> like they're, like they're in, on the radio, <laughs> tuning in on their AM radio in, the, <laughs> in their sh- 68 Jesus. Chevy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm old. I still Can they uh, tune whatever. in. Yeah, yeah it's, it's we cool. tune in digitally too. I suppose. I suppose. Um, what we have else a guest have we got? here. We do have we a do guest. Have a guest. <laughs> fam- rambling on. Just quickly, Stephanie's we should... like looking at us. I, know. I said oh we take a minute to do the intro. We're at like eight at minutes five. in. Quickly before <laughs> before we don't get this in. Thank you to all of our listeners. Our numbers are growing exponentially. I just looked the other day. Oh yeah, it's so crazy. So people are out there listening, but please be sure to follow us subscribe, leave a comment if you're <laughs> able, and thank you very much. Yeah, just do hey. all that random social crap that you have yeah, to do to make the world work these days. All right, you good? Jim, we're, you just... We're good. We're good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you introduce our guest. All right, so today we have Stephanie, Stephanie. Hansen, right? Hansen, not Henson, Hansen. Hansen, yep. Hansen. Uh, and uh, as I told you, we don't do a lot of research. I know you, you have a show that you run. Yep. Radio a, show. A blog. radio show, a blog, <laughs> podcast, cook, kinda. chef. Yeah, a few podcasts. Yeah. Um, yeah, Stephanie's Dish is probably my personal brand, as it were. Okay. And Weekly Dish is the radio show that I co-host and have co-hosted for 12 years. Okay. I also do appearances on the Jason Show uh, TV a couple oh. times a month there. And I owned a business. I was an entrepreneur, and I retired for about a week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yes. So I do social media and social branding for people, brands. And I think people associate me a lot with makers because I have the podcast Makers in Minnesota that I've had 160-some episodes. Wow. Oh, so yeah. I've been doing that for about three and a half years. Okay. And uh, loving it? Yeah. Yeah. Loving it. Um, I mean, you have to say yes. Right? Well, and I, it's funny you bring that up because I, I was on a, a van trip for six weeks and I brought all my podcast stuff with me and I thought, oh, I'll, you know, podcast and Weekly Dish is now a podcast as well as a radio show. We have unique content that we post there that we call The Second Helping. Okay. Um, so as the digital space has grown you know, you're having all of these ways to access this content. And in some respects, while I was gone, I just, I did not feel like podcasting for one second. Yeah. You're while you were driving. And just, I just had no interest. I was like, I'm experiencing these things and I don't really want to talk to anybody about it other than the person I'm experiencing it with. And 
I just felt like I wanted to be in the moment and I kept thinking I would podcast and every day went by and I didn't. So that was new for me because usually I'm talking about and sharing everything. So yeah. So you had some downtime. Yeah. Quality time, you and your husband (laughs) cruising around. (laughs) Very quality, very small van environment, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she and showed us. You showed us pictures. Yes, the Wonder Bread van on Instagram. My husband bought a 1972 Dodge Explorer. It was two thousand dollars from some guy's yard in Wyzetta that had been covered <laughs> with a tarp, and he brought it. He asked me about it, and I was, you know, my husband's retired too. He's ten years older, and he's an author, okay. so he likes to have projects. And so I was like, fine, two thousand dollars, like whatever. What could be wrong with that yeah right? and Give it's just not you know yeah kind of i was like yeah fine and then he brought it home and he was like okay go and go and look at it my husband can't smell so i opened <laughs> oh the door and i got inside it and i was like what is going on in here this is terrible and i'm like and you drove it from my side i like honestly things had died in there and yeah. it smelled so bad i had to, i was coughing like i had to get out <laughs> And he's like, what? Yeah, he had no idea. (laughs) And he literally drove it then to our cabin in Ely four hours away. Again, no. I was Uh like, did you wear a mask? (laughs) Finally, he took it all apart. And there were so many dead like rodents in there. But after all that and the rehabbing of it and, you know, I probably shouldn't tell you this, but you spend two thousand dollars to buy something and twelve thousand dollars to fix it up. <laughs> yeah. oh, I, I, You're that, talking that to the was crowd my with question. these guys. Okay, yeah. so yeah, yeah fourteen thousand yeah. dollars later, wow. and we didn't even paint it. We have the Wonder Bread van that you can follow on Instagram. We left from Ely and went to California, and we had this dream of going to national parks. And the last couple of years, we'd rented minivans. Oh yeah. And we liked that experience, but you're always putting the bed away and right. we wanted like the bed to stay and You wanted the real van. We wanted the van, yeah. 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 So is your husband a gearhead? Does he did he tear the engine apart and somewhat. All I would he that? he calls himself, and it's so true, a dabbler. Okay. <laughs> so he knows enough to dabble in many things. And maybe and, get in trouble. Yes. Yeah. So like he'll take out things and yeah. then he's like, oh, Yeah, and then I put it back in and it didn't work. And most (laughs) things he can kind of figure out. Mm -hmm. But there are things that he gets in over his head. And I am very just like, whatever about his projects because they're fine. But I realized as we were driving, like, he doesn't really know what he's doing here. (laughs) Like, I thought he, (laughs) like, overhauled the engine. And as soon as we heard this knocking, you know, he he bought some oil spray and was just spraying it in there. Yeah, the sea foam <laughs> stops the knocking. And Jim. <laughs> there was a little uh, rodent issue on the van, in the van on the way and I had the scratch, scratch, scratch. Oh, scratch, scratch, yeah. scratch. And he's like, well, it must be coming. I'm like... It's a chipmunk. Yeah, Something's in here. You can get it out. And he's like, well, I don't know where the holes would be. I'm like, really? Because I feel like I know where they are and I didn't have this van stripped down. <laughs> So, yeah, he's a dabbler. So okay. did he do all that work up north? Did yes. he do it in Ely? Yes, oh, yeah. in our driveway. Yeah. Uh-huh. Put all it up our... on blocks? No, but <laughs> sort of. Yeah, right. Um, our neighbors were all just like, okay, wow, well, look at that. Go. Yeah, well, the, I told you I have a 73 Dodge Travelcraft motorhome that I'm quite proud of. But uh, my friend Marty and I, my biz- other business partner, uh, we we tore that thing to pieces and rebuilt half of it. and. That's fun stuff. Yeah. All the same issues. I got dead things all over in mine, too. Yeah. You you can't help that. No. And so, you know, his solution to that was to buy one of those foam cans. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And we foamed up like a couple (laughs) things. And then the next day, or not the next day, like three days later, scratch, scratch. Yeah. No. And he was like, well, I think it's walled in. I'm like, great. Oh, that's even it's better. It's going to die and stink, and we're going to kill ourselves here with this dead, rotten mouse smell. But no, it wasn't walled in because then we actually caught it in a sticky trap. Oh. And I was like, is this another one? Did this come in from the outside? Did, was it been along for the trip since Ely? Is it a passenger? We it still just don't know. to go on a little trip. Yeah. So yeah. we ended up with two dead mice along the way and a grizzly bear sighting. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. Where was that? 
um, a place in Wyoming called, I can't remember, Grizzly but Bears. the Sheep Trail Hill. was the trail we were on. And Were you walking on the yeah. trail? Yeah. And the, oh. this was pretty early on in the trip. We'd been to the Black Hills already. And the park ranger, when we pulled in and she was giving us the map, she's like, well, you have your bear spray, right? Like, no, (laughs) we don't have any bear spray. And he was like, do we really need bear spray? She's like, yeah, you need some bear spray. Somebody (laughs) left a can here, so I'll give it to you, but you got to bring it back after you're done with the hike. So we get the bear spray. We go on the hike. And I've hiked, you know, national parks. And usually you're on kind of a wide trail. It's fairly heavy traveled if you're in a national park. This was like in the Wild West, man. There were tumbleweeds and the van was the only car there. So nobody else was there. As we were walking, I had pants on and I thought, oh, it's a good thing I wore pants because brush was rubbing up against Mm -hmm. both sides of my legs. And the path was windy. So we got to a place where about, I don't know, 40, 30, 40 feet in front of me, there were this, this big like shrub. And it was moving. And I said to my husband, who was behind me, hey, something's in that shrub. And he goes, you think so? And he kind of comes up and he's looking. And I'm like, yeah, something's in there. And he's like, hey, hey. And sure as shit, out of the shrub comes a gigantic grizzly bear with the humpback, silvery, sparkly. He runs like up the side of the mountain. So he runs about, I don't know. 50 feet away, looks back at us and stops. And my husband's got his binoculars. He's looking at it and he hands me the binoculars and I'm so dumb. I'm like, okay, I take the binoculars. I look, I'm like, yes, that's a grizzly. And so as I'm looking, I hear this like, I'm like, oh, there's something else. I go, there's something else in there. Now I'm whispering. And he's like, do you think? I'm like, yes, I think. And I start backing up. He starts backing up. The other grizzly, the original grizzly, kind of runs up the mountain but stops a little further up. He's scared, I guess. Yeah, that, that's what you uh, want the grizzly to do is yeah. to run away. Yep. And we backed out and we walked backwards for like a quarter of a mile just looking. And then we start walking back to the car and my husband's like, damn, damn, we just saw a grizzly. I Googled, there's only 1,200 grizzlies in the United States. Wow. Oh, really? That's, yeah. yeah. So that, like, we saw it. one right away on this hiking adventure. I had PTSD for, like, three weeks. So where was <laughs> the can of uh, the bear In the spray? backpack. Oh, right. Yeah. So and what, what is that? Is it, like, a spray can? It's an or orange it can, trigger? like a hairspray can. <laughs> yeah. And it sprays some, or I researched this after, of course. <laughs> yeah. It sprays some orange mist. But in order to do that and have it be effective, you have to be within 15 to 20 feet <laughs> of, the, of bear. the bear. Right. And then if they're like, if a bear charges a grizzly bear, because they're aggressive, they're not like black yeah. bears or like, brown bears that are right. really after your food and will only attack you if they've got cubs and it's a problem. No, the grizzly bears will attack you. So you're supposed to get down and cover your neck and your head with your arms. Right. And I mean, the next day I'm researching all this stuff. I'm like, yeah, sure. I'm going to get down in a ball. (laughs) You're going to run. I'm just going to be like, and don't make a sound too, because I'm going to be crying (laughs) and wetting myself. (laughs) Yeah, it was crazy. So the spray, you just, it's it's like hairspray. Like it just does a a mist. So I have, no, (laughs) it's not. (laughs) I mean, is it like a hornet spray? You know, like when there's a hornet and it shoots like 50 feet? I have guided canoe trips up into uh, polar bear country. So, uh, like, Are you a Widgie kid? No, I'm not a Widgie kid, but I'm a Chippewa. Okay. Do you know Widgie? My daughter works at Widgie. Okay, so Chippewa is uh, a private boys camp. Widgie, obviously. Yep. Widgie, so, yeah. YMCA camp. Yep. Mm. And uh, they they take trips very similar to the ones that I took. Um, so, yeah, I've been up three trips up into the <clears throat> subarctic. But anyway, this this we always laugh about the bear spray because... Uh, I don't think I'm not sure that you can actually have mace anymore. The the chemical whatever mm. compound that is mace. I don't know what that stands for, but uh, so it's pepper spray, but it's capsaicin, and so the locals they call it like human seasoning because the, because the bears if a bear is 15 or 20 feet away from you and it's rushing at you and you've got this can and it, it is a pretty good jet of of sure. stuff, you know, 
that bear isn't stopping because you sprayed it in the face with pepper Thank spray. You. Very yeah. unlikely. Very <laughs> unlikely. That's exactly what I thought. I was like, okay, yeah, all right. So then, and it's it's a placebo effect, right? Yes. So every time, I'm like, do you have the bear spray? <laughs> and I knew right. it's not going to work, but <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. So that was the van trip. It was great. Yeah, I think the truth is that it's it's quite rare that grizzlies attack even grizzlies or polar bears attack humans. It's just when it happens, it's a real bad deal. Right. Yeah, so, it's ugly. I would you think. Don't yeah, put yeah, yeah you die. Situation. Yeah, I mean, I think there were a couple of deaths in in Alaska last year, right around the same time. Uh, people running trail races and stuff like that, you know. So yeah, bears. That's cool though it that happens. you got to see it. Yeah, that is cool. My daughter, the widgie camper, she got me a patch. So that, widgie's hardcore. Yeah, she's been into the Arctic too. Actually, yeah, she, they they go up. Even she went on the Thelon River. Okay. And was up there for, I think it's 40 days. Yeah. Her, two other girls, and a counselor who's a college woman, kid, basically. So one counselor, two, three There's four th- people three total on the trip. Oh, that's rare. Yeah, it was really um, a great trip for her. She loved it. She's really enjoyed Widgie so much. Oh, Widgie is a fantastic yeah. institution. Yeah. And it's on Burnside Lake, which is where our cabin is in Ely, so... Okay. At sixth grade, we were like, here's where you're going. You're learning how to canoe. You're learning to do all these things. And it has become a real touchstone for her in her personal and professional development. She works there in the, she does the trail. She helps the kids pack out every summer. Yep. She's probably got one more summer to work there. This will be her third summer. But she's also just made so many friends and she kind of found her people there. And she had, was a downhill ski racer. So she had that tribe, but at school, she wasn't really making those connections. And so Widgie was always, when summer came, it was always a great place for her. God, I love that you're talking about this because it's usually me advocating mm-hmm. for camps um, and you're echoing everything I think about camps. Like, they, they are so fantastic for kids. Well, and here's the thing that's bugging me lately about camps. Mm. And it's the parents, not the camps. Like my sister, who I'll just throw under the bus here. She's like, well, (laughs) you know, we have so, like, she couldn't possibly go there. Like, we have so many activities in the summer and the family cabin and the this and the that. I'm like, no, you need to get your kid away from you for two minutes so that they can learn how to advocate, how to get a voice, how to learn how to talk to adults, how to learn to navigate with other kids. So many benefits. How to learn to do something that they don't know how to do without their parents teaching them. Yep. And she's like, well, you know, my child doesn't really like like meeting new people like that. Like, she's not like your child. I'm like, no kid likes that. No, it's part of the beauty of the experience. Yes. And when you go to your new job the first day as a you know 25 year old person, or you go to the dorm, yeah, you don't know anyone. That's the point. Mm -hmm. We're such just I don't know who we're raising, but and I did it simply because. (laughs) I'll be honest. It was on our lake, and I kind of wanted a week without my kid. Yes. I was like, get Fair away. Enough. Go do something. We are not the... We had one child, so we were the entertainment committee, and we were tired. <laughs> yeah. I just... I think it's, you know, whether it's scouts or whether it's arts, whether it's whatever it is, get oh, your kids so many into fans. environments that they are not comfortable with. Yes. That's the magic. Yeah. There are so many good organizations out there that do... I mean, so the, you know... Widgie, Widgie had been a private uh, girls camp prior to becoming a Y camp. Same with Warren and several others. Yep. But, um, but you know, they, the Y has been able to really keep them autonomous and let them operate as their own, as, as if they were a for-profit camp or whatever. Yeah. You know, it's I just, think that's part of the beauty of, because each camp that the Y has is a little different, yep. runs a little differently. I also have one other thing to say, too, about this camping thing All right, with kids. I'm, I'm going to weigh in, too. Don't ask your kid. Yeah. Like, she's like, well, I asked her, and she was oh. like, I, I didn't, she doesn't want to go. I'm like, your kid is in fifth grade, <laughs> sixth grade. Why do they get, I mean, uh, yes, you get a choice, yeah. but not really. Like, no. we're going to do some things that are going to make you uncomfortable. You don't get a vote in everything. Like, okay, so let me just get this straight. You asked your kid if they want to go home without their parents Mm -hmm. to a place where they're going to know no one for 10 days and to do hard physical work like canoeing (laughs) and those kind of things. Yeah, they're probably not going to go, yes, let's go. Right. And and girls in particular need to get out of their comfort zones and do different things that traditionally maybe they don't think girls do. That's important. for sure. 
Yeah, and, and so you know whether that's true of girls girls need to get out there and do that and boys need time away from their electronics and everything else yep. if there's benefit in getting those kids out into nature like that and you just like you i mean the boundary waters then just the environment of feeling so small yeah and so out that these things are not in your control so mea weekend is next weekend and I'm taking my boys up to the Boundary Waters yeah, with that's one great. of their little buddies. So the if you haven't, and there's outfitters, if you're not that person, that's all the gear, get an outfitter to take you. There's a million people. Go to a family camp. They have programs there. So I mean, that's my I camp. A, I, I love it. Endorsement. I, I have uh, Earth Ed, these boxes, these Wanigans over here are, uh, Earth Ed is a nonprofit that I started in hopes of someday starting a camp. So this is a dream of mine. You're almost there. I know. I know. Yeah, I worked close. for tw- almost 20 years at, at Chippewa. I was their assistant wow. director. Yeah. So I like, you know, I went up, I was there as a camper when I was six and seven years old. There's a long story to that. But then when I was 19, I went up and I was a counselor and I never stopped until a few years ago. I secretly hope my daughter kind of does that. Stay with it. Uh, yeah. And I, and I hope you know, I don't know that she'll be like the executive director. I don't know what she's going to do. She's an English major. What do you do as a college student with an English major? Sales, oh, marketing. Shit. I mean, I, I mean, don't know. That's a rough one. I know. She's like, well, maybe I'll be a food writer. I'm like, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Your kids who Stick try so camp. hard to not be with you and do what you're doing and then follow along and do what you do after yeah. it's all said and done. Those little brats. Yeah. You know, uh, the thing that got me to camp and I only went to camp for mm, a short time yeah. was the ability to shoot stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, uh-huh. if yeah. I got Great. to shoot a, a bow, and, bow arrow and arrow or a gun, yeah. I, I didn't really want to go. I was like, oh, that sounds kind of lame. And then it's like, well, you know, you get to shoot a bow and arrow and, and a gun. And I was like, really? I'm in. I'm, in. <laughs> I'm like, when do we get to start shooting? <laughs> you know? So funny. It is yeah, a very But it's thing. totally true. I mean, right. that was that was the thing that got me. That I got to like, say one more thing about okay. camps and parents. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I understand your your gripe. And I think you're right. You you don't ask. You they just go, and it's it's super important. And I think that parents need to let go. So the the newest trend in the camping world is for like automated photos to be sent out to families, or like putting cameras around camp mm-hmm. so that the parents can check in on their kids, like a dog log daycare, in, like a you know, you yeah, on your weird, kid. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When my kid was in the Arctic, we got no communication. No. And you only, if there was an emergency and that meant, and actually she did twist an ankle and was seen by a doctor and we still did not know until she came home. (laughs) That's old school. Yeah. And it's fine. It's, you know, the world is a scary and dangerous place and you got to learn to get those skills of how to survive in it. And they're not just physical skills, they're emotional skills, Mm -hmm. development, teamwork, leadership. So only the last couple of trips that i i guided so i've paddled many thousands of miles and you know three trips up into the arctic or subarctic but anyway uh only the last few trips did i have a satellite phone or a spot communicator so if you have an emergency you can get yourself out um before that it was i mean all of those trips you you go for three weeks four weeks whatever and uh you're gone and and you don't you don't communicate with anyone yeah like you might you might know that there's a resort on some of the lakes or something like a fly-in resort and that could be a a safety outlet for you but you know once you've paddled through there well if if someone gets hurt that resort is two days back or there's another one four days forward like what do we do you know you got to sit there while your buddy goes that's and it and they used to do that i mean i i fortunately never had any serious emergencies but there are cases where people would you know like you're watching the kids i'm taking them and paddling for a day and a half and we'll see it we'll come back and get you in three or four days you know my husband is um we owned a business together and then we sold it and right away he was like okay i'm gonna retire and be an author like oh wow okay (laughs) so he wrote his first book that was kind of a las vegas caper and it was really entertaining and very good but of course, it's very hard to get published. I'm sure. So yeah. we self-published and sold about, you know, 100 books to our friends who all loved it. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like, okay, wow, well, it's harder than I think. So then he wrote the next book, which was about a 1950s hockey goalie who'd been hit in the face a million times and kind of what that culture was like. 
and it was dark. Oh, and well, that uh, good. it was also that, really good. But yeah. he never published it because he sent out all these. He tried to get his query letter. Nobody wanted that book. It, I, it's a hard book to describe, but it was really good. But so they're okay. Then the third book, he's like, well. I have this idea, but it's not really a book. It's kind of a short story. And it's about, you know, Ellie and Ellie's our daughter and being in the Arctic. And then like, you know, something happened. He tells me the whole story and he gets to the end of the story and I'm sobbing. And I'm like, wow, I don't know if I'm sobbing because you're telling the story of our kid or if I'm sobbing because it's really a good story and it's a meaningful story. But like, that's more than a short story. Maybe that's the one. Right. So he's like, no, nah, that's not the one. I'm like, no, maybe it is. <laughs> you never know. So he writes this book that's like a novella, kind of. It's fairly short. He's like, it's 150 pages. And I read it, and it was fantastic. And I'm like, no, this is the one. But it's not all the way there. Like, it needs more. Mm-hmm. And so he rewrites it. He goes to the program at the loft. He does a year-long intensive oh. there. But he doesn't do it with this book. He does it with the <laughs> hockey book that's practically already written. All these people don't get that book. And so he's getting totally <laughs> discouraged. And I'm like, no, it's this is the book. So finally, he shows his professor the book. He actually hires him to give him feedback. And the guy's like, you had this the whole time? Like, this is <laughs> oh the my. one. <laughs> Why were you holding out yeah, on Yeah, <laughs> so he puts, he gets that book into, right, into the shape it needs to be in. He starts sending out query letters. He gets three agents to connect with him while there one was on vacation on a hike in Yellowstone when she read the book and he's he got an agent a New York agent like getting an agent as an author means you're 50 percent there Mm -hmm. they still have to sell the book but so now he's working on rewriting it with her and he's sort of like he gets frustrated because like she wants an outdoors story and a survival story and he wanted like to do it a different way and i'm like um last i checked this is really important to you to get published so do it her way work with her she's the deal so he's working on that but this whole story is about two kids on a trip in the arctic and something happens to one of the kids and how do you get out how do you get help what happens Mm -hmm. what do you go through i love it yeah and so it's and i know the agent and it's it's a woman i like know exactly where she's going with it because it's the way i would have gone with it when i first read it and i think she wants to sell it like as a movie because i think there's a lot there Mm -hmm. yeah and so he's in the final like i'd say he probably has like a month left tops so he's really in the but he's like just exactly like i said like what do you do something has happened what do you do Right. Well, when can we read it? Well, everybody's like, when I, if, if it yeah, gets... I'm already like, kind of like, <laughs> yeah. what's going on here? So the agent, what, what happens is the agent then gets it to where she needs it to be. Then she puts her feelers out to her publishers. If they buy it, then it's about a year before you actually get the physical book. It's mm-hmm. not funny. It, mm-hmm. I don't know why it what takes a, so long. What a process. But, yeah. Right? Yeah. But and he's then, written three books now. Yes. That's pretty and, and that's impressive. Someone, I mean, this is going to be published in all no. likelihood kind of 50% <laughs> it's 50% there better if than the, the agent 50%. is in but age and and the whole publishing industry has suffered like many other industries where the, all of the middle has sort of been cut out mm-hmm. so it used to be that people really pitched books and they worked longer on them like if she she's got probably her handful of people and if they buy it great if they don't then it's an unbought book and mm-hmm. He still has an agent, but then what do you do God. next? Being a writer is I know. pretty tough. I know. He's, he's an artist, right? <laughs> right. So. Are you a musician? No, not really. What kind of art do you do? This stuff. Okay. Yeah, like <laughs> graphic art. Yeah. 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 So I'm a painter, oil on canvas, and then uh, I've had a couple shows at the MIA. Yeah. Last one was more conceptual. So, um, But I always say, <laughs> so he's laughing at me, because I say the hard, you know, a step below an actual artist is a writer because it's even harder for a writer. You know, I mean, it's hard to sell a painting. Mm. It's even harder to sell a book. That's really interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and totally weird. My mother-in-law, who's his mom, who's 86 mm-hmm. has been in a long relationship with an artist who is a MacArthur genius award winner, which 
if I'm you're not. An, no, and if you're an artist, <laughs> that's like you've right. arrived, right? Because they right. give you, you yeah, know, two hundred fifty thousand oh, dollars yeah. to produce art. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's just like listening to him talk about his art and being an artist and. I just go away with my eyes burning. Oh, yeah. Just like, oh, my God, what is harder in the world than that? And I, I, I always, <laughs> I, and I always <laughs> felt like, like, I think my husband is legitimately a good writer. I read a lot. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter in anything if you're good at it. Mm. Right. It matters if you can be good at it and excel and somebody gives a shit, mm-hmm. right? Right. Mm-hmm. And most people don't care. No, most people don't care. Yeah, yeah I mean... She's, she's a time. good writer. I'm a pretty good writer. I have never had any desire to try and sell writing because it seems like such a yeah. BS sort of industry. It's really difficult, it seems like. so. Yeah. Talking's way easier. <laughs> Talking is so much easier. And trying to sell paintings, I mean, wow, especially in this town, really, really difficult. This town harder than others? Yes, I think mm-hmm. so. Because mm-hmm. I think people here will go to other towns to purchase art. And then bring it back here and say, oh, I, was, I got this went to New Chicago York. or I went to Chicago or right. I was in L.A. Yeah. And I found this, you know. Here it's sort of like, I mean, if you can, if you're an artist and you can kind of make it somewhere else and then be here, mm. then it's like, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. y- you're legit. Yep. <laughs> you it's know? so funny that you have to go away to. Yeah, that's sort of this Midwest thing. Well, and we have. I mean, you can't you can't walk down the street without bumping into musicians and artists, and artists here. I mean, I mean there is a ton of artists. Really yeah. cool, I creative mean, this is a culture. Great mm-hmm. community yeah. for it is. the arts. Don't it's I'm, we don't want more people moving though. Remember, we always kind of like, but <laughs> right. it's terrible. It's terrible. Saint terrible. Paul uncool. I think is the future for sure. <laughs> you know what's funny about art in general too? Like, I never had art in our family. Neither did I. Like, we had pictures on our walls of each other, our family. And then I remember actually when my mom, they bought a Yamagata. Do you know what that is? I... I, It's some Asian man. Yeah, I I know the name, but I'm I'm drawing a blank. He makes like, it's a small world kind of communities. Yes. And we got one of those. And I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. I was like, oh, this is so cool. And then we got a couple more. And that was the extent of the art in our family. (laughs) Then I met my husband, who his family was really like into art and had art. And the walls were full of it. And then we kind of adopted that. And we have a lot of art now. But I look, I, I love looking in people's windows at night when I'm walking. Mm-hmm. So do I. I do Creepy. too. It's, I know. Okay. I, I know it's weird. <laughs> people but... have nothing. Yeah. Right. They have yeah. nothing on their walls. Yeah. I don't get it. Right. They like maybe have something in their bathroom or a f- wall of family photos, maybe something above the mantle. Usually a TV. <laughs> yes. You know, something like that. It's yeah. so weird that people don't have art. Right. Yeah. I mean, I. There was not really art in uh, my family growing up, but my mom was really into crafts. Yeah. You know, and, you know, uh, sewing and knitting and things like that. And stuff like that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. All of that. But also making uh, ornaments, felting. And, yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So, I mean, I was kind of crafty around the crafty stuff. So, I mean, it did lend itself to art. Um, and okay. then I just got interested in art really early And then on. you just figured out that you're actually kind of good at it, huh? <laughs> yeah, sort of. I mean, uh, he thinks someone comes in and spray paints all these. That's why he's laughing. He's, no, I mean, it just never. I, I could just no, see it on his face. That's not at all what I was thinking. Actually, and what I was going to say was I'm I'm super fortunate to have become friends with Jim and then and then he lets me come they into steal his, my paintings. I steal all his art so yeah. my house has art all over the walls because I get to steal Jim's art. I like it yeah. I go over to his house and I'm like wow I didn't know wow you have art like all over your house all of his kids have paintings in their rooms I'm like wow okay your art my art yeah but he I'm, knows I know a little bit all yeah. right all right but guys, yeah let's take a let's Quick break. Yeah, everyone's looking at me like, really, do we have to? (laughs) We're going to come back and talk about the State Fair. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Yeah, we'll take a quick break. Okay. Stephanie, this is fun. All right. Today's show is brought to you by the Andalin app. 
a first-of-its-kind digital legacy preservation app that allows you to digitally attach photos, videos, and audio recordings to the places and objects you love. Imagine hearing your grandmother's voice telling the stories of your family heirlooms. Preserve your memories, prepare for the future, and share with those you love. Andolin, available in the App Store and Google Play. Visit andolin.app for more information. Need some help with a construction project? Looking for thoughtful design and honest answers about what is possible and what is not? Kinetic Design Build is a full-service boutique remodeler servicing residential and commercial clients in the Twin Cities. Design and build with purpose. Visit kineticdesignbuild.com to request a consultation. Packing for a trip? Let Pack Simply give you a little help by delivering travel-safe products directly to your door in an airport security-safe pouch. Unbelievably easy and surprisingly simple. Make your life easier. Visit PackSimply.com. Interested in art? James Holmberg is both an artist and an art consultant. His strong connections in the Minnesota art world give him a unique perspective on the talented pool of artists from our region. Let James guide you to an original work that will come alive in your home. Visit jamesholmberg.com to find out more. All right. Do you want to go on a wilderness adventure with me, Sam? Or maybe you know a group of kids who could benefit from an extended break from their electronics. Or maybe you just need a break from those kids. Visit earthedfound.org for more information about how to get started. For information about becoming a sponsor of Legacy Matters, please visit LegacyMattersPodcast.com. We've returned. We're good. Okay, welcome. We're back. We're back. Yeah. <laughs> back. We are back. <laughs> back from our little break. Yes. Which yep. is kind of like just being <laughs> on the podcast if we're giving you the behind the scenes look because we just talked about four different random things. Mm-hmm. Completely. You might have gone to the bathroom, but I other did. than that. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah, Sarah went to the bathroom. I went to the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I, I always chuckle about happens. the break. Yeah, just because in you know in listening land, it's not they a break. Don't care. Right, it, it, it's, it's just we have our little break time. Mm. But this was a good break. It was, it was a little uh, you know depressing. Uh, <laughs> there's there's no money in podcasting. That's what I pretty much. With. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That's I had to no, it is. It's totally fine. Right? <laughs> what have I ever done for the money? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's the lesson, though, isn't it? Yeah. Probably. Yeah, it is. So, yeah. Stephanie, how are you doing today? <laughs> Good. 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 So, are you, where are you from? Are you from here? Yeah. I grew I grew up in prestigious West Bloomington. Ooh. Ooh. Very mm. prestigious. Yes. Wow. Yes. Okay. <laughs> very fancy. It's funny. This I went to, um, I grew up in Bloomington, and there's been a lot of talk about children's theater in the news lately because Ooh, yeah. there's been the whole sex abuse scandals. I actually went to school there during that time in the eighth grade. Okay. And so I was just telling somebody the other day, they were asking me where I went to school. I was like, well, I went, was, I went to school in Prestigious West Bloomington until I went to Sholen Cedar for a year. And then my parents were like, oh, that's enough of that. <laughs> so back to Prestigious West Bloomington, I went. Okay. <laughs> they, they weren't, they weren't uh, fostering your, your, your acting your career? Your secret You know, talent. I think my parents saw a culture of a lot of potential for abusive people. Mm. Mm. And I'll just give you this statistic. I was telling my girlfriend, there was a day school there and there were about 68 students and it was a conservatory type format. And I was accepted into that program and I was delighted and I was so thrilled and my parents let me go. And I remembered the very first day of school sitting in the lobby of the Children's Theater and John Clark Donahue coming down the stairs and he was our principal and talking to us about what we were going to create in this community and feeling just like, oh, this is my place. Like I have arrived. These are my people. And really having just such a great experience that year. But in my grade, there were nine kids, boys and girls. Of the nine of us, six that I know of had sexual abuse. Oh, wow. So over 50%. And it was varied. Some of it was worse than 
other se- I mean, I don't know if right. you have a sexual abuse scale. Some people right. were raped. Some people were just violated. Like you can go down the list, but it's, it's been really interesting to think about that because now these stories are starting to come out because John died yeah. this year. Jason McClain has fled the country. Some of the abuse survivors have gotten a lot more vocal. There's been a lot more attention to it. NPR just had a fabulous story. With I read tw- it. Yeah. And they're, they're saying, wow, there's 20 abusers that they know of in this culture. Right. And my abuser has never been said out loud. And it's just so odd and so funny at the same time. Like this is how these cultures are pervasive, right? Mm. Whether it's the Catholic church, whether it's a boy scouts, whatever it is, we just talked about camps. Yep. Um, so anyway, I've just been thinking a lot about growing up and right. that school environment has been on my mind mm. as all these stories have started to come out. And Yeah. And I think, you know, if you're listening to this, I, I think that a lot of that abuse I'm not going to say that it's not happening anymore because I'm sure it is, but I think it's a lot more difficult for people to find themselves in that type of a culture or that type of a situation. Absolutely. We were discussing like in school sports, you know, like you're not ever like in my husband's day, the teacher took him and five kids camping. Mm -hmm. Right. And it was no big deal. Or you went to the teacher's house for a project or like in youth sports, you know, the coach was showering with the kids yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually, my husband is so old that he took like a swimming class where they n- went nude in the pool. Oh, uh-huh. so uh, the, the camp I worked at, we, I mean, we dipped nude yeah. in the morning and the evening. You, you had the option to yep. bathe nude out in the lake. Can you imagine it, that happening now? I mean, the, so I, I sort of lament the loss of some of that. In a way. My husband does too because he's kind of a nudist and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> an old nudist. Awesome, uh, sort of like <laughs> we actually were saunaing recently, and he comes into the sauna and sits down next to my friend, and she's like, "Yeah, um, your <laughs> naked butt is on my swimsuit." <laughs> he just came in naked and sat down on the top shelf. I love it <laughs> on yeah. the swimsuit though. On her swimsuit, oh, right? She was still like, yeah. "Um, well, was yeah." Was she naked too? No. Oh, he was. Oh, he was the only one. But it's her. Swim- <laughs> well, what was it's her wearing? sauna. She oh, was in her bathing it. suit. Her husband oh, was I in his bathing it. suit. Visiting sauna. Everyone right. else was in their bathing suits except him. You know, I love she it. was like, "You're." I'm like, I know. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> what can I say? So I lived in Germany for a little while. They're naked all the time. Oh yeah. No one. And cares. I'm not freaked out by it really no, yeah. at all. And in fact, I think it was my sister that was like, "You know, maybe you should tell your husband it's time to stop bathing with your daughter." I was like, really? Is that? She was like, yeah, it's going to maybe be a thing. Like if she talks about it at school. Like, oh, all right. Okay. Good to how, know. Uh, how much age difference is there between you and your sister? Five years, but oh. my sister's younger and kind of prudy. Yeah. Because well, oh. I, I mean, you are, you're, you're harsh on her, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> I love but it. But we love each other. I can tell. I can tell. She's my favorite. Yeah. I have four sisters. So. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right, so you have four siblings. And one of them's your favorite. I love yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, she's my youngest is my favorite. Just We have, um, oh, I had a great. sister that was, uh, talking about tragedy, I had a sister that was killed in a car crash, who was 18 when she died, and I was in the sixth grade. Mm, and awful. yeah, it was pretty, talk about like, it reorders your whole family system. Oh, for sure. Course, yeah. My other sister is in town still, and we're not super close, but you know, sisters. Yeah, and then I have the younger sister, half two half brothers, a stepsister, a lot of people. Okay, yeah, I've got like a million siblings, and I, I love every one of them. We're varying de- degrees of closeness. And yeah. how many um, kids did you then have? Myself? Yeah, I got three. Okay, because I, I just had one, and I was like, "This is plenty." <laughs> that was enough. <laughs> well, I box. needed Done. three because the first two were boys, and I, I adore them. Right, but the third is a girl, and she's three years old. So the, the boys That's are your favorite, twelve and ten. Yeah, I was I was actually talking to Tyson, my eldest, about this this morning, because he said something, you know, well, I'm your favorite dad, and I said, well, you're in the top three for sure, <laughs> 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 and he's like, oh, so, but uh, I said, look, look, honestly, like, let's be fair about this, isn't. Andy, everybody's favorite because she's three years old, and so her name is Andal, and that's where that yep. comes from. But um, yeah. He's like, yeah, See, I think right. I kind of got ripped off because I, I do. My husband and my daughter have a closeness that I'll never have. Yeah, I just never will. And I was like, how you did have this to have happen? A boy. 
Yeah, and I didn't, yeah. Yeah. so I got ripped off. You kind of did. But girls yeah. love their mothers, too. It's just that Oh, there's... no, they don't. <laughs> they love them in theory. They love Not them practice, fiercely. But... Independent. I mean, do, yeah, do a mom and her daughter. Do boys love their moms better than the dads? 100%. Yeah, hundred percent. You take care of your mom, right? You're oh, yeah. like care about your mom's oh, feelings. You well, I'm just I was, shooting it out I was in general. Daydreaming for a moment about your daughter, or cuddling with Andy. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> so it's like you nodded off for a moment. <laughs> no, the Little boys blood do dote on their mothers. Yes. like bo- boys right. need mommy time. Yeah, right. They don't need daddy time. Now, we get along really well, and as they get older, there's it's a different type of bond that I'll have with right. them. But the, like at three years old, Andy wakes up in the morning and she comes running over and she just jumps on me and she wants to, you know, just snuggle, snuggle in. Yeah. Snug. Daddy, I love it so much. And the boys that didn't happen once, mm-hmm. not one time. It was always, where's mommy. They'd look at me and be like, is she around? Like, <laughs> right. <"Where's the?" laughs> so that's just the way it works. But, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, so yeah. we had a big family and I went to, I think this is kind of funny. I uh, went to school at the University of Minnesota and I remember like my first day I had a costume on practically, like I wore a blazer <laughs> and I had on round glasses because I was going to college. Right. <laughs> I was going to be college material. The blazer. Yes. Yeah. And okay. You were serious. About oh yeah. That. And I was an English major. Oh. And I took anthropology. Oh. And oh, six it. months yeah. later, I was in a U-Haul driving across the country as a cocktail waitress going to open a nightclub. Yeah. What? And how did, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now we're talking. talking. Yeah. We, okay. Anthropology. And then you're, all right, where's, where's this nightclub? How did this happen? It was called the Heartthrob in St. Paul. Oh. And they had this thing where you sang and danced in between serving. Uh-huh. On roller skates. <laughs> and really, oh the God. thread that's common I here... I love it. ...is I was a performer. Right. Yeah. So it's from the children's theater oh, to... Yeah. And I really... I loved marketing and promotions and entertainment and... And roller skating. Yeah, and just... Yeah, I do love roller skating still. Oh, my God. I could do it just <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, so Instead all of that... Of this. Well, <laughs> I get it. I get you know, it. You could do it while you're roller skating. It's I coming mean, back. Yeah. It, it is. There was yeah. just an article in the New York Times about roller skating back in the heyday in the 70s, right? Mm. And how those old souls are still around and you see it. Yeah. I just love it. I think it's just you're free and you're just living. Oh, right. it is really fun to go to the roller rink. Yeah, I think it's so a, too. Yeah. yeah. I like to I go there. with my nieces. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you're roller skating still. Yeah. yeah. I actually just went somewhat recently. Okay. It's super fun. I was. I wish like there was a place where you could go and do it with adults. Because <laughs> right. right. you know the kids are the boys are going as fast as they can, yeah. and I'm oh, like, yeah. ooh, if you hit me and I break a hip, that's not going to be good. <laughs> yeah. Um. So just from there, you know, I just became. I went from that to selling advertising and marketing. So did you finish? No. Uh, no. No. And you don't regret it. You don't. It's so, no, yeah. I don't. <laughs> when it's I, overrated. Wait a minute. So did you only get six months in? Was that the extent of it? Yes. Okay. Did you take your finals that first semester? No. <laughs> uh, I love it. I, I did like six years and I still don't have a degree. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a weird Same with thing me, though. actually. <laughs> when I went to, so, you know, then I got into advertising and marketing and all these things and. I finally, I got into radio by accident and I had to fill out a, a employment application to actually complete like my file or start my file when I started. And they were like, okay, when did you go to college? And I had always put on my resume that I went to college and I put my grade because I did have one some quarter of grades. <laughs> yeah. But I just, that's what I said. Like, oh, I yeah. went to the University of Minnesota, English major and 3.8. Yeah. <laughs> And that was it. And then the day no one checked because you didn't have like all the access. So I'm reading this thing at Hubbard and it's like, and you, if you lie on your application and I'm like, darn it, (laughs) I don't, I can't, I don't think I can do that. I can give them my resume, but if they want to get like all specific about dates here. And so I said for the very first time on an actual application, 
that I didn't because I didn't want to get the job and get fired because it was my dream job. And then I never really said anything about it again. And everywhere in my professional career, people just assumed I had. Right. And I didn't ever correct them necessarily, but it doesn't come up. (laughs) Right. Right. And then at some point it becomes irrelevant. Yeah. Yeah. And then when my daughter was wanting to, you know, go to college and I was so invested in her going to college, like I'd saved, I had all the money saved. Didn't matter where she went. Like I had the money saved. Like I spent my entire life saving for my kid to go to college. And she was like, yeah, I don't know. I was like, I I, I was such a hypocrite. I was like, you have got to do this. You have got, I don't care what you get. You have got to do this. And I was very emotionally invested in it. It was very just troubling for us. It was a hard time. And I finally had to let it go. And as soon as I let it go, she's like, yeah, I'm going to like, yeah, I'm going to go to college. I'm going to, yeah, I think I'm going to do this. And now I'm like, whatever people need to do, they need to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I don't care that I don't have a college degree. I never wanted to go back. I have no interest in going back. I don't think it makes me more, more. I don't think it for the career I'm in, I don't think it means diddly squat. Yep. But I will say my husband had an MBA and went back as an adult and we owned a business together and he could read a P&L like nobody's business. And mm. for him, it was really useful. And I am glad that my kid is continuing on and going right. to graduate. She'll be a four and a half or five year student, but I'm happy. Oh, and is she going to do anything that's going to make that 120 grand worth it? No, <laughs> she's not. But I think for her, it's been a good experience and I'm glad she's doing it. But for me, no, I could care less. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. the way I feel about Where it. Where is too. she in school? Uh, University of Minnesota. Okay. She's a junior, sort of junior and a half, mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. English major. Yes. Yeah. She's working on her and boy, she wants to talk to me about it nonstop. Her capstone. Okay. <laughs> Which is her thesis. Oh, thesis. <laughs> and she's doing it on horror films. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. I Can I send her your way? Yeah. yeah absolutely. Because she could talk to you about horror films Perfect. ad nauseum. Do you know her favorite? Well. I mean, how it's, horror is. Right. <laughs> she's <laughs> deep. These talk two about are so I, Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to send her your way. I can't yes. even tell you. Jim. We because should invite her in for the Halloween episode. Ooh, no, she's should. deep into it. I mean, oh, for sure. I'm, Let's get I'm her in here. Disturbingly deep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So is she. She's writing a thesis about it. He wants to be deeper. Yeah. Look at his face. No, He's I, like, mean, I, I mean, I'm deep. I'm like, pretty, so you know what's what? your favorite horror movie? Like, that's such a weird open ended question. I, yeah. I I'm think not I sure know I can, yours. Yeah. I mean, I definitely have one, and it's. It's pretty. It's pretty bad. Which is it? <laughs> What the fuck? I can't even watch Just it. Say it. No, you can't. Just what say is it? it? It's not like you, is it you, not you, mainstream, you, and we won't you, you know what it is. It. It's like an art film. It's it totally is, it acceptable. Is. So to I, say I think it. Martyrs is. Uh, probably, is this a Lars von Trier film or? Uh, it's is it French? French. It's French. I don't know. Yeah. Ooh, look at the and, artist. And then uh, you know, and and but I like more the the Santa Sangre, the cook, the thief, the wife, lover. Yeah. Yeah. Does she like those? I don't know. Oh, I am <laughs> telling you, it's the subject comes up, and I'm sort of like Your eyes oh. glaze over. You're like, right. I know she liked Hereditary. Oh, I haven't seen that one. All right, okay. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what else she likes. Oh my god, I <laughs> yeah. In. I mean, it's like this she is likes like, the old ones too. Yeah, the old ones. Oh, how are about really one of us? One <laughs> of us? One of us? <laughs> Oh God! Yes. You were like checking yes. your your horror cred or something. I like. uh, I know. Well, it's not even. Hor- it's just you know it's where not you kind of just we don't like the slasher like the yeah it's not the cheesy like the hostile stuff the ones where you just kind of get uncomfortable and you're you like, like the psychological, like the psychological thriller. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean the martyrs Very one. That's disturbing. a three hour. Yeah. I'm gonna watch it. No, you're not. Why? Oh, please she can, don't. She can pick for herself. <laughs> okay. No, no. She's an adult. <laughs> she just turns it off. And she She's got like some, it. some college under her belt. She, she, can, she, can, <laughs> she can watch the show if she wants, Jim. We want you to watch it and then please follow up with us. It says it's only an hour and 43 minutes. Martyrs, Drama Seems Horror, like 2008. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Is that the original one? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, looks like it. All right, so what is a horror <laughs> film that you guys like that would be... Oh, sorry. What is a horror <laughs> film? I had to cough. Turn the button. What is a horror film that you guys like 
that like you, you could know be what more a accessible. Really good fun one for me is uh, you know I like Final Destination. That's a really fun one. Okay, like that's a good one. <laughs> I was thinking he was going to say like, like Hitchhiker. I mean, uh, that's just uh, that's just a really oh, good. Oh, the original Hitcher with the uh, original Hitcher. Rutger, is Rutger Hauer. Good with Rutger Hauer. I like yeah. that. Yeah, that's, that was is a good that one. Horror? You know, I mean, I kind of think those are in, yeah, in that category. Oh, well, I actually liked that movie. You know? yes. Oh, The Shining's um, great, too. Final Destination, though. Have you seen that? No. That's, that's where so that's, all, they all know they're dying or something? Yeah, well, they cheat death, yeah. you know? Oh. And, no, and then an each one dies, you know? Because you, yeah. you can't cheat death. Because you can't cheat death. What's you know? the one where there's, like, the fog? What's well, the, the fog? There's, the mist. And there's the mist. <laughs> okay, I yeah. know that my daughter loves the mist. What about, yeah, that's um, good too. What's the one with Kurt Russell, John Carpenter? Is it Carrie? No. <laughs> no. Christine. No. Oh, Chris, that's Christine the car, is right? Good. Yeah, Carrie's that's good. a good one. That's a that's the angry oh, that's car good that kills one. people. Yeah, Come on, huh. you remember that one? I do, but I'm yeah. like, God, hmm, no, I'm blanking. Angry on car. Yeah, I the, think I read the book. It runs oh. people over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is it a Stephen King? Yeah, yeah, Stephen yeah. King. Yeah, that's a good one too. Have you read his book on writing? No, no. it's fantastic. No, if you ever wanted to write, thought about writing, appreciate writing, you have to read that book. Okay. It's a mandatory read. Okay, okay. noted. It's All very right. interesting. Okay. But we've already right. established that you can't go anywhere with writing. So. No. <laughs> well, okay. Or, so, or podcast. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to admit, and you may know this, so huh? I'm trying to write a little short story. Oh, that's right. That's right. A little short story yeah. about, it's a horror, but it's supposed to be for young adults. So I don't know what that means. It means it's probably good. I know. A lot of young adult fiction is really That's good right now. Yeah. Like, so it's not going to be gory, but it's inspired by up north. And like, because I think the woods are so scary. Like, they are. Creepy. Like, and I'm more scared of people than it is an actual thing being out there. So I started writing it and I'm just trying to find the kind of the hook. One of my Can daughter's favorite stories is there was a book called The Passage. Uh, yes. I know that. I just, yep. I finished those three has she watched the TV series yet? No. It's okay. So the <laughs> first book, the bu- oh, the book, oh, so I good. was like in our cabin in northern Minnesota with the book, reading it, mm-hmm. and she like came around the corner and like pounded on the door, and I Terrified. was like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> like she just laughs still telling that story. Remember that time you were in the passage and I scared you? <laughs> so does she get scared? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Were you scared, like driving across country in the van at night, like when you? I mean, where did you sleep? Like, did you just pull over in a? Where is this place? Like we slept <laughs> like, in the. We slept. We only slept on the like side of the road twice. Was that scary? Yeah, a little. Uh-huh. Yeah, a little. Right. And I think what you said, like people are scary. Right. And the just being in the dark and the noise and that's scary. I'm on an island, too, in northern Minnesota. Oh, yeah. So I'm very acutely aware of the noises and the sounds. And fire is scary to me up there Mm, because we're always, if there's a storm and the light, it's like, oh, here we go. Right. Yeah, I think things are scary. I, I mean, honestly, my biggest fear is pandemics. Oh, well, oh. that's just going to be realized. Right? And, I, and that's why, lifetimes. so like that book, uh, the Cormac McCarthy's The Road, mm-hmm. I started to watch the movie. Mm-hmm. We were 10 minutes into the movie where I, I just like, I started crying and said, I cannot watch it's this. too real. I, yeah. Right. Pandemics. That's my Pandem- biggest fear. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah I mean, history. Is. And so Bird Box was scary to me. <sighs> okay. That's... But did you read the book? No. Okay. Please. Please. Because <laughs> the read book is the better. Bu- my dad was like, Sarah, enough, enough, enough. Because I watch you with my dad. I'm like, this sucked. The book. Amazing. Okay. Please yeah. read it. I Bird will Box read the book. is good. Um, the other one I want to just get in because I just remember Let the Right One In. It's oh, Swedish. yeah. Have you seen? Yes. I read the book and then I watched the movie. I've watched the movie. Amazing. There's an American version. It's still yeah, good. and I saw that one too. Okay, <laughs> okay. So Psycho, Psycho is still Psycho is yeah. You know that's American Psycho. Okay, that's, that's one of super her disturbing favorites, yes. and she loves the like Psycho TV series. Yeah, yeah. yeah. American yeah. Psycho is 
definitely one of my favorite. Brett Easton Ellis. Favorite. Yes, he's, yeah. We need to have a younger true, person it's, in any way. It's true love. And Christian yeah. Bale yeah. in that role. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's perfect. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was amazing. He's right. such an amazing actor. He is. He was yeah. really Will you, good Do that. you find like the joke, like the Joker, is that scary to you? Well, I haven't with seen Heath it Ledger, yet. Or not Heath Ledger, with Joaquin Phoenix. The yeah, I haven't the, seen it, but I, I think I'm going to like it. I, I think I'll enjoy it. I think yeah. the idea, again, is that people are the monsters. I love reading right. about cryptids and zombies and vampires, like whatever. <laughs> right. I just do. That's <laughs> I what I do, do in my spare time. I'm really weird. But what scares me, it's people. And so I think that whole character, with at least the Heath Ledger character, just a complete psychopath. Right. That's scary. scary. Yeah. And to know that that like there's certain elements of Ed Gein, I mm-hmm. think, yeah. in yeah. Mm-hmm. the Joaquin Phoenix Joker, uh, yep. Mindhunter. Like right. um, I always That's am interested show. in serial yeah. killers. And, yes. Uh, yes. Wrote a big paper on Charles Manson. And I don't know why I feel the need to do these things. But <laughs> oh, you oh. oh, so maybe it isn't that the apple fell too far from the tree. I don't, I don't think know. Right. So. right. OK. So recently she says, Mom, have you ever read the book Geek Love? Do you have you read this book by Catherine Dunn? I know this book, but I did not read. read I was obsessed with circus freaks, which Mm -hmm. we don't call them that anymore, obviously. But I was obsessed with P.T. Barnum, that whole these people that had these birth defects that they could make them into entertainers, and just that has been something my whole life. I'll recommend that. Have you have you seen Boxing Helena? Yes. Yeah, that was a disturbing movie. Oh, I've got a ton of them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. The, the inner workings of these two's brains. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, well, that, that movie kind of falls into play. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Uh huh. So, yeah. So she's, yeah, you'll need to talk to her. Yeah. Uh, we'll have her in. That would be great. Stay uh, fair. Yeah, let's, should we? Let's, yeah, so like, let's, I feel like uh, we I have about five minutes before I got to leave. We need something light or <laughs> right. you know, funny. Or food so, related, because I think I talk about food. So, I don't know. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that you kind of do. I mean, we so do we'll, every Saturday. Let's get uh, boxing Helena out of our brain. And, yeah. So, yeah, what was Go your favorite at the, or what's a good story from the State Fair you want to share? Yeah, so what do you, you do podcasted at the State Fair? Yeah. Like what? The State Fair. We podcasted the State Fair two and, years ago. My radio partner, Stephanie March, and I said, hey, we're going to just podcast every day at the State Fair. Yeah. And we did, usually it was like what you should do, what you should eat. It's kind of a service package. But then it also is like State Fair stories because there's so much Americana and so much culture. And that whole 10 days is just this thing that we're both pretty interested in and... I just, I don't know. I'm crazy about the state fair. And I, and I always was kind of as a kid, but the more I get into it, the more I'm into it. Yeah. And I think the funniest story was a couple things. One was we got to broadcast or podcast with the lady carving the butterheads in the butterhead cooler (laughs) as it was rotating. (laughs) That was a pretty interesting scene. Mm -hmm. The other one though, that was uh, a little different was talking to the people that work at the haunted house. Oh. oh, and like what it's like to scare people comes back to and yeah, how they <laughs> scare them. And so the story I think I thought was really funny this year was one of the, they knew someone was going through the house. It was a friend of theirs. So they did a little more unorthodox little scaring. Yeah, a little extra <laughs> scaring. And she peed her pants. Oh, oh yeah. dear. And they That's were awesome. really sad and sorry after the fact. But oh, they weren't, that wasn't a, like, they weren't proud of that? No. Oh, I, I thought that was going to be a win. <laughs> no, like, that, like, because he was up. like, well, she was really scared and we maybe overdid it. And oh, well, they didn't And just by touching crystal. her, like, yeah. right, right. Uh, just a, and, and what he said, and I believe this is true, they don't touch people in the haunted house, yeah. okay? Right, yeah. right. But the people around you touch you because they're bumping back and forth. Oh, sure. yeah. So you think that you're getting touched by these scary goblin-y monsters, but you're not. It's the people right. around you in the house. Right. Oh. Well, that turns sad. So, I mean, I, I would, in every circle I've ever been a part of the, you know, my rustic little hometown of Elk River uh, camp, if someone were to make someone pee their pants, that would be a funny moment. Yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think that's <laughs> like, funny. Yeah. I, yeah, but she he can't felt bad. change because then she's at the state fair. That's right. And, like, and he yeah. felt bad. No, I get it. I, well, I, 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 I get how I, I feel bad. But, but I mean, she must have really... Uh, I mean, 
Was she? Deep. Is she an adult? Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Did you go through the haunted then house? Then it's still no. funny. No. I don't like haunted houses. Huh. Yeah, but it's That's not where you draw real the line. though. I, I don't. I don't want to be pretend scared. Oh. Okay. I think Fair. being scared. I'm. I feel scared a lot. Sure. Okay. Sure. Really? Just yeah. Trump scares me. Uh, yeah. Like well, literally, I mean, pandemics scare me. Yes. I yeah. had cancer, so getting it back scares me. Like I have yes. a whole have real, line of scary things. things that standing in a waiting in line to go pay money to have someone scare me is like. Meh, You're like I'd not. rather eat some meh. cheese curds. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's delicious cheese curds. So, no, the state fair is fantastic. So yeah. do you? Uh, is someone paying you to be there during that t- period of time? Podcast on a Stick is the name of the podcast, and Hubbard Broadcasting, as part of our weekly dish arrangement, yes, we did get paid to do that. Okay, well, that's okay. fun. Um, it yeah. is super fun. And, and we repurposed the content, and yeah, it was great. The State Fair does not pay us, and nobody controlled our content. We went, and we found our own stories, and we talked to... Uh, my sister actually got engaged on the Ferris wheel, so we talked Aww. to her about that experience. Oh, that's a, that's, a lot of people have been married out there. That's cool. Uh, and we talked to the 4-H kids about what it's like to sleep in those dorms. Oh, and, my God. I yeah. stayed in those when I was a yeah. kid. Yeah. So there's a lot of stories there that you wouldn't see unless you were really immersed in the culture and you spent time there. And just the food stories, too. Like, mm. you know, how many Nordic waffles can you make out of the Nordic waffle hut? And a little secret that people don't know mm. is there's like a staging back area of Nordic waffles that's oh. not in their booth so they can make more waffles because oh, sure. they can only make, I think it's like, I want to say it's 168 waffles out of the waffle irons that they have in the, so that the front area, yeah, or? they're trying to like move it along faster mm-hmm. and just all those food stories. There's a ton of them right. and how you create a Minnesota state fair food and what they're looking for and the process yeah, super fun. Yeah. How much money you spend if you eat every food? Oh. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. I bet a lot. <laughs> yes. It's like at least, I think, $1,000. Wow. If you ate all the new foods on the first day. <laughs> if, if that's possible. <laughs> Plus right. you Maybe you just take a bite <laughs> take of a bite. everything, right? It's, it is hard, though, that's to... Kind of wasteful. Well, and here's the trick. I would go and buy something, mm-hmm. and then I would turn, eat it, eat a bite, and then I would say to the people around me, hey, I'm not going to eat this. Do you want it? Yeah. Right. Nobody said no. Oh. Right. Nobody oh. ever once was like, mm, no. People <laughs> just ate my random food. And it's oh. not even like one mm-hmm. crab ball. It could have been like nachos that my fingers were on. Right. right. Half of a sandwich. Yeah. People were like, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Thanks. It was so, so I mean, funny. Were you just standing there and you just went, oh, this is good. And then just a random person walking by yep. and said, hey, would you like the rest yep. of my nachos? Yep. And they were like, yes. 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 Wow. yes. 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 I'm, I'm picturing myself at the state fair. Like, yeah, sure, I'll take that. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I would. <laughs> no, I, if you totally said would. that to me, I would be like, sure. You thank totally you very much. Yeah, everybody did. <laughs> yeah. Why wouldn't you? Everybody did. That's funny, right? Minnesota. Well, well, I think I think we oh, better yes. uh, give right. you an opportunity to yes, where we can find you. Yeah, plug whatever you need to plug if you want to plug it. In podcast world. Which okay. You have a lot of stuff. I do. So Weekly Dish is my radio show Saturdays from nine to eleven. We also have a podcast channel where we release unique and exclusive content that if you subscribe to that channel, you can listen to that content. And we usually release that exclusive content on Wednesdays. I also have the Makers of Minnesota podcast where I talk to cool people making cool things in the state of Minnesota. And you can find that wherever you find your podcast. And stephaniesdish.com is my website where you'll find podcasts, also recipes, Stephanie's picks. I when I travel, I try to post things there. It's sort of a digital calling card, as it were. I always send people there if they're looking for something about me. Sounds good. Great. Awesome. Sounds perfect. And we'll link everything in our show notes. So. Yep. Yes. Thanks for having me. And we're getting right. your daughter so in here yeah. for yeah. Halloween. We'll do that. Oh, I know. Yeah. That'll be fun. Oh. Yep. We'll so. play some clips of our favorite movies. She can talk, talk about them. Oh. Yeah. oh. Well, and, and she do can a say, guessing. We should do a quiz. Yeah. That's a good idea. <gasps> Please too. do. Will she Will she? She's do... the most pretentious <laughs> yeah, will she do English a major voice? ever. So I'd love it if you would roast her. <laughs> will she do a mocking voice of you like you do of her? Like, will oh, she? Yeah. Does she can. play that game too? Yeah. Yep. Awesome. I actually said the other day, is that the voice you always use when you imitate me? <laughs> She's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Stephanie, thank you That's for good. coming thank in. You, Thanks. Real thank pleasure. You. Thank you.
right, everyone. Thanks for listening. We love comments and feedback, so go ahead and let us have it. If you'd like to learn more about Andalin and other legacy projects, visit the website at andalin.app or kineticlegacy.us. Take care.